Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Fun. Today in five minutes, I'm going to show you how to paint hydrangeas so easily using Q-tips and a sponge and a little bit of tape. Now I'm going to start out with a mop brush. It's a very soft brush, one inch, and a little bit of white and green to make a mint color. I'm going to paint my canvas with this minty color. At the top, I'm going to add a little more of the green to darken that mint, but I still want the whole thing to be very, very light. That way the hydrangeas pop with their big, gorgeous little round balls of flowers. Be sure and dry your canvas thoroughly at this stage so that you can draw out your rectangle and put down your washi tape. Now, washi tape is a great low tack tape. Um, it's really important to burnish the tape down. I'm going to place little bars of tape going across evenly spaced. You don't have to measure it out if you don't want to. Or you can, if you do, I'm gonna add a little bit at the bottom because I want some dimensionality. Now, a thing that I did here and I wanna tell you about as I'm putting out my um, black color, this is sort of like a gray black color that I'm brushing out. And I'm gonna add a little white to it to make it interesting and feel like a ceramic bisque. But I didn't burnish down my tape enough. And I decided not to take that out of this video so I could show you how I correct for it. But I would highly recommend that you burnish down with your fingers thoroughly. Dry your tape, and then I like to pull it off in the opposite direction that I placed it down on. You can see a little bit of that bleed through where I didn't press the tape down enough with my fingers and a big boo-boo on the outside. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna come back with a clean dry brush, remove the wet paint, and then come in and paint white back in and my mint color back in and just refine those stripes. When acrylic paint is dry, it's super repairable. So you never have to worry about this little stuff. And I just want you to know that mistakes can happen to everybody. What artists do is just fix them and move on. Now I'm drawing three circles with a Taylor chalk tool. You could use kids chalk. And I'm taking a lightly damp craft sponge and I'm going to paint in the top hydrangea ball of flowers with this neon pink. I love this color. You could use any color that you love. I'm going to put the lower ball over the vase a little bit. And I know we painted it, so we're removing some of our work, but that's okay. You can go back and add more color if you need more coverage. I'm gonna get into my luminous violet now. This is like a great purple. Some of these are black light re reactive, so I thought that would be fun. I'm taking a bunch of three and four Q-tips, and I'm gonna come in and put pink on the left-hand side of the ball and more white mixed into it on the right hand side of the ball. I'm allowing the colors to mix on the canvas so that everything is still wet and they're intermixing. Now I'm gonna come in and do blue on the lower blue blossom of hydrangea. I come in on the right hand side, adding the white and blue, creating that highlight. You can see they just like almost develop or magically appear. I'm using a bunch of five on that one. I'm gonna come in and do my purple. Notice I let the blue and purple still wet kind of blend together because they would do that as petals. And I'm gonna come in and get the white on the right hand side for the highlight. I'm not painting it on my dark, I'm just creating shape of the hydrangea flower. Dry this thoroughly. And then I'm gonna come in and do the leaf with my uh, number 12 round using a little bit of black and green. I do an upward stroke and then I pull in little leaf strokes, creating that big, wide, serrated hydrangea leaf. You can kind of see that I zipper those in and it has an overall curve effect. I'm still tucking it behind the purple and bringing it forward here, coming down off the vase. See how that creates a little balance, just zippering in that stroke. It's not about having it perfect, just the general feeling of the leaf. Dry this, the next layer shows really great on top. I'm going to refine anywhere I have to with Q-tips. You come back and if you have to kind of bury the leaves a bit, you can do that. Get your green and yellow and a little bit of white when you need it. And you're gonna come in and do the zippering again, but sort of reveal the leaf, leaving some of the dark there so that there's some dimensionality. I'm gonna do the bottom leaf. And then I'm gonna add uh, some yellow and green together if I need to. I'll come in on with the black on that one side, but I'm gonna add some yellow and green together to create the veins going down those leaves. That's what finishes them off. Now remember, we've got new videos every day at 10 a.m., five minute tutorials that you can do in a short amount of time. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I wanna see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.